up guys, Face of 5 here and welcome back to another speculation video and today we're going to speculate the brand new roadmap for Total War Warhammer 3 and once again I'm going to be speculating with the Raw Dude. Hello everyone, I'm the Raw Dude and great to be back for yet another speculation. Alright. So recently CA gave us another roadmap that shows us at the very least two DLCs with somewhat of a third that's all shrouded in mystery at the moment. So first First, we're gonna have, of course, patch 3.1, which will have it all sorts of goodies on there. Then in the summer of 2023, we shall have the Shadows of Change DLC. Winter 2023, we shall have Thrones of Decay. And spring 2024, we don't know. And also shout outs to all sorts of YouTubers like Lord Master, Sota, Great Book of Grudges. I watched their videos to see what else they could think of to try to make this speculation here. And then we will shall talk about now. Now, when I first saw this roadmap, I thought, okay, so they're gonna do like uh, the usual Lord packs of 1v1 and then maybe like a giant free LC with a third one. But no, after listening, Listening to other people and to other YouTubers, it's like the way this is going to work is that it's going to be three characters and one legendary hero per pack. Do you remember for the Chaos Dwarf DLC how uh, CA said, oh yeah, from now on with the DLCs, we're going to do three legendary lords, one legendary hero? Uh, that wasn't yeah. meant just for race pack. That's meant for all the DLCs as of now, unless people say, Whoa. no, we don't want this anymore. <laughs> this is new. Yeah, so let's see how this works and hopefully they do it well. Okay. All right, so the first one we have is Shadows of Change DLC, which they said summer 2023. Uh, so with the first one, we're going to have have Zinch, Cathay, and Kislev, three legendary lords, and one paid legendary hero, along with a free legendary hero, which we'll get into a bit later on. So let's start with Zinch being like the big chaos boy of that pack there. After listening and hearing other people and with the name already being revealed to us, Shadows of Change, that really kind of fits only two people, being the Changeling and the other being Egrim Van Horseman. Do you have any questions regarding these two here? Yeah, I don't know the Changeling, but Egrim Van Horseman? Who is he? Okay, so a little rundown. So Egrim Van Horseman was a very brilliant bright wizard, you know, the guys of the lore of light. He was a very educated and very talented bright wizard from the College of Magic, but secretly he was actually a chaos cultist, and he was trying to use the powers of chaos to help him and just better himself. But what happened was that eventually people grew suspicious of him, and then what happened was that when they found out about him, it was already too late, because he went to the College of Light, very deep underneath, like they each have their own little secrets, like artifacts or whatever. There was a gigantic chaos dragon underneath them that this guy set free and rolled off into the chaos waste. <laughs> Bye, have a great time. Yeah, so imagine that, like a Zinch character who uses the lore of light so he can use Inneta of Amatok and then like just fire upon them with a giant chaos dragon. So with the Zinch side of the DLC, Personally, I think this is also to round up like some of the gaps filled by the Champions of Chaos DLC. So for Zinch, I think the Lord and Hero types are going to be Chaos Lord of Zinch and Exalted Hero Zinch, just pure melee Aww. combatants of that style. All right, not essential units. I think a theme that's going to be here is a God-Touched Beastman. For Zinch, we could have Zangors being a potential unit. So you could have Zangors on foot with either like a big swords or sword and shield or bows. But then we have the Zangors on disc, which for the Zangors, you could have like a melee variant or one that I personally would like is a bow and arrow variant on the disc to really make them like a unique uh, force on the flying. Not only that, but while it's helping the mono god here, it could also maybe help the beastmen like update as well. All right, then another unit I think we could have is maybe some form of Zinch aspiring champions. Because if you remember from the Warriors of Chaos upgrade system with regular undivided like with Archeon, you can change your regular Warriors of Chaos to aspiring champions. But there's nothing like that for the touched units. Like there's no Zinch aspiring champions, no Korn or Nurgle or Slanesh. And there's always like that big space at the very top after the Chosen. But I think they could be unique units because there are some for like Nurgle and uh, Korn from the tabletop. But I don't think Games Warcheck has gotten around to Zinch or Slanesh yet. So either they can make some new ones or like maybe they're already working on that to reveal for Age of Sigmar or the Old World tabletop. All right, now we get to the big bad the monster units because there has to be monsters like for at least one side. So we got two options here, being the Mutilith Vortex Beast or the Fireworm, aka a Greater Spawn of Zinch. So like two other options for the Zinch roster, although it's, I'm not sure about it, is perhaps Zambuls, which is like Zinch touched the Minotaurs, or like maybe Brimstone Horrors, but that's an Age of Sigmar unit. Yeah, uh, I remember when I was watching my speculation video, someone commented, you forgot the Brimstone Horrors when we were talking about if there are other types of horror type creatures for Zinch. Yeah, that's my mistake. I had no idea those things existed because those are Age of Sigmar units, which I had no idea about. All right, moving on, now we have Cathay. And hey. now Cathay, this is a bit hard to do since it's still so new, but there's one style that I hope does happen, although I'm not opposed to other ones, but I feel like there's more variety, sake in one side. For potential Legendary Lords, we really have two options, although I think I really hope for one over the other. We have the Monkey King, 
or Lee Dao the Fire Dragon. Now, I really hope it's going to be the Monkey King because we already have two Dragon Lords for Cathay, and Lee Dao, I don't know if he'll add like more variety or more fun compared to the other two versus the Monkey King. And plus, we get so many freaking loading screens about the Monkey King in the game. Like, look at this one I got from Milk and Cookies Toll War video right here. The depiction of the Monkey King varies widely depending on the region on local legends. In the north, poets sing about the raging gorilla that bellows for blood. Storytellers of the western mountains tell of a baboon-like creature with beautiful golden hair and a gorge rear. What? For the king is always in heat. The legends of the eastern coast portray him as a large glutinous orangutan, his exposed belly raw and covered in unsightly oil. And in some parts of the south, the Monkey King is said to be a slight spider monkey that jumps upon the shoulders of allies and enemies alike, whispering half truths and lies. Doesn't that sound like the four chaos gods? Yeah, it's like corrupted, chaotic monkeys. Well, not exactly like that, but agents of them like trying to impersonate the Monkey King to frame him. And who better is it to frame and spread lies than Zinch? And with perhaps a changeling giving all forms of the Monkey King to spread speculation, mistrust amongst the population of Cathay versus him. So based off of that, I think one of the biggest parts of this will be different types of monkey warriors, like in the Cathay DLC here. Perhaps one of spider monkeys with like dart circuit or bows and like the baboon being the usual like a uh, monkey soldier like maybe not being as highly armored or defensive as a cafe but definitely being a lot more offensive and then you could have like giant gorilla orangutan like super soldiers like croxicores again i really hope it is the monkey king so we have like some other things to add to the cafe roster or so he becomes like a uh, perhaps a semi-faction where he is technically cafe but it's like better for him to recruit these guys versus cafe unit because he's not trusted really also just as a little disclaimer to to you and to everyone the units and the things i list in this dlc doesn't mean that they'll be all be in the same DLC. It's just potential units here and there. It means that we will get some of them, but not all of them. That's my guess with it. So another one after the Monkey Wars could be Jade Lions I keep hearing about from different YouTubers. And this is, could be a cool one being like either big monstrous units, kind of like the War Lions or like almost Cav, like the Demigriffs, just in Cathay and form that way. But again, I'm not sure because this is all still new Cathay lore stuff and all that. Another one is called the Vermilion Birds. So imagine like a big phoenix for them. In fact, if I remember, you remember the Sky Junks? Yeah, there's like birds inside them that's making them fly. Yeah, yeah, and these could just be like bigger, more mature versions of those birds. Maybe like a flock like the Aryans for the Tomb Kings? Or being a single entity unit like the Great Eagles. All right, so the last the Cathay unit speculation is perhaps the Onyx Crowman. Now, the Onyx Crowman are sort of like the secret police and secret agents of the Dragon Empress specifically, going around doing her work and like trying to take out people that could like uh, oppose the rule of the Dragon Emperors. All right, so that's the Cathay side. Again, I really hope for the Monkey King, Monkey Warriors, maybe with a few extra things here, but that being the, the biggest part of it. Now for Kislev, we really only have one legendary Lord that's possible for this one. That's Mother Ostankia. Uh, Ostania, Ostankia, I actually said it correctly this time. Yeah, that's my bad. That's like, again, okay. this is all new lore for me, especially Kism and Cathay having, like, completely new lore with it. So with Mother Ostankia, she is a hag that's said to be of the land in the forest, I forget which forest, but on the eastern side of Kislev. And obviously being a big inspiration from Baba Yaga from Slavic mythology and lore. And so I think with her could come, like, a completely new lore called the lore of hag. But we'll see what if CA does that. And for Lord and Heroes for Kislev, it has to be hag witches and hag mothers. Just simple like that. And uh, so for the unit, for Kislev. This is where uh, CA can do more of the fantasy side and hopefully not as much regarding the bears. Sorry, but that was too many bears. So for units, there could be either elk or moose riders, perhaps being like a, another version of the winged lancers wow. and being almost like the giant stag knights of the wood elves. Again, this part is pure speculation. This is just something that was just pulled out of thin air that people were speculating. But the next one was actually a unit used on the tabletop in very old editions called the Oregon Cannons. These are just like regular dwarf organ cans, not as powerful, but can be pulled by horseback so we can move around faster. You know what this artillery type reminds me of? The ones in Empire and Napoleon Total War where their cannons are being pulled by horses. Yeah, I never played that game, but I do know that it does exist. So perhaps he could take those assets from that old game and sort of uh, modify them for this one. Now, another one that could come in is called Frost Fiends. They are giant batwing monstrosities that are a part of like the Kislev land and nature. So I thought like almost giant bats really for Kislev. Giant bats? Say what? I didn't 
know that they yeah. exist in Kislev. So is this like Kislev's version of the Parageist? I guess similar to that. Now, another unit that could come is the Hawks of Mishka. Now, the Hawks of Mishka is already a spell in what, if I, if I forget, it was the lore of Tempest or Ice, but it's actually based on a unit from very, very, very old lore hammer. But one thing that Great Book Grudges said, which I kind of agree with, is like, what if they are owls instead of eagles just to make them look more unique? I think Kislev will have like, I don't know, if they, if they add the Frost Fiend and the Hawks of Mishka, that means two flying units for Kislev. Yeah, and plus Kislev has no flying units, so it could be a good time to add it in. Yeah. Now, another part of the Kislev is that maybe this won't be part of the DLC, but a free update. Please give Katarin and other people unique mounts and not just bears, please. The CA has said that Katarin was going to get a unique sled. They just ran out of time and resources. So hopefully this is the time to actually implement that yes, for both like, her and ice switches. Also, when I was looking at the fan order again, I saw what appears to be an ice guard on horses. That could be a new potential unit for the ice guard, like ice guards mounted on horses. Would that be cool? Oh yeah, sure. I don't really use like ranged cavalry that much, but I'm sure a lot of people will have use for that. That's just me. And maybe try to update the snow leopard because it's not as good nowadays as it could have been. Yeah, so either like make it a bit better or give it more units or maybe have it as a mount for ice witches too. That could be cool. Mm, yes. And now we get to the uh, free legendary hero for Siege. Now this is the free OC side, which uh, CA did put like on the roadmap there if you read again, how it's a melee combatant twisted by the Lord of Change. And for that one, there's really mainly two options here. There's a called Hellbrass or Galroch, the very first Chaos Dragon. If you want a little bit of story about Galroch, here's what happened. So Galroch was a very big star dragon tamed by this other High Elf noble. Doesn't matter who he was because he wasn't really named. So the, this High Elf noble and Galroch were busy like fighting the demons, fighting up hordes of them together. And so one day there was a particular demon horde led by a Lord Change that killed that High Elf noble. So then Galroch, in a rage, decided to fight the Lord Change, but the Lord Change just stood there with a little smirk on his mouth. But Galroch, in a rage, then bit the demon's head off. But the problem was, by doing that, he consumed the head of that Lord Change, but then tore his head in half, and then made the two heads of the Chaos Dragons you see now, and corrupted him. Damn! Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! Yeah, and it said that Galroch is also a spellcaster, but what could be done is that he's a legendary hero who's a big bad Chaos Dragon, perhaps with bound spells on him. But he could also be a caster too, so who knows. He called Hellbrass, however, he's not really a spellcaster, but he's this melee combatant of Zinch that has a breath of life with him. So whenever he goes around, actually like trees and flowers grow around him, which is really weird compared to the usual like landscape of the Chaos Waste. So what could be interesting with Echo Hellbrass is that not only is he a great melee combatant, like a single dude, like what if Echo Hellbrass is a, a melee combatant and that's the opposite of Amor's engine, where he actually heals units around him. I would say I will go with health, but health rest. He could be like the medic in your army. A medic and tank, yeah. Yeah, personally, me and a lot of others are thinking Anko Hellbrass is most likely for the free LC part. Now, for the legendary hero and the paid one, that is really hard to tell. We already have Orika for both the Kislev and the Empire, which is why I'm thinking it's most likely Cathay. Again, I have no idea because these are all new characters here that I didn't have the time to research, unfortunately. All right, so now moving on to Thrones of Decay. Now, with this one, it said uh, Winter 2023 or like late 2023. So for Nurgle, I think there's only one option really for that. It's Tamar Khan, especially since he came out with his own book literally called The Throne of Chaos. Thrones of Decay, Throne of Chaos, look at that. And his roster could be interesting for this side of DLC. Here's how I think it's going to work with the Lord and Hero types for Nurgle. Lord type, Chaos Lord of Nurgle, big fat melee combatant, and Hero type, Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle, big fat spellcaster. Damn boy, he's sick! Ah, that's a thick ass ball. Damn. All right, so the first unit that we could add, since we talked about Zangors in the first one, how about Pestigors for Nurgle? And then also maybe uh, Nurgle Minotaurs, although I'm not sure about that one. But I think that the Gores are definitely more important than the Minotaurs, honestly. All right, now here's like uh, the potential monstrous infantry that we could have, either Plague Ogres or Bile Trolls. But like I said, because Tamarkan is already like in an ogre body, maybe it could be Plague Ogres over Bile Trolls, or we could get both. You never know. Yep. But I'm just trying to like stay realistic here. And then here are like other potential units being the putrid blight kings aka the aspiring champions for Nurgle. Like a bunch of big fat boys that deal a ton of damage but also take a bunch too. Now this is not particularly Tamarkan. Like this wasn't a unit from his book. This is more end times with the Glockkin. Yep, but Glock I figured King. like as I said before these are technically the aspiring champions of Nurgle which we don't have for any of the god touch factions. Another one that could be is called Rot Knights which are these uh, chaos warriors of Nurgle. On these giants I think they're called uh, fiends of Nurgle or like creatures touched by Nurgle which are like almost giant bulls 
bulls playing instead of horses, being like the uh, blood crushers of Nurgle, the pus goyle blight lords. So instead of like the plague drones of Nurgle with the death's head being ridden by, uh, you know, the demons, what if these are some chaos warriors on them instead? Oh wait, that could be perfect. When you upgrade the chaos warriors of Nurgle on horses, you could upgrade them into these guys. Exactly, because as of now, only corn can do that. All right, now for the big bad monsters of the Nurgle side. We really have two options, although I think one is more guaranteed if it's Tamarkan especially. The Toad Dragon and or the Greater Spawn of Nurgle. And if I remember, I think the Toad Dragon is said to be almost as big as the Dread Saurian, so that would be awesome. No thanks, I choose life. All right, now moving on to the Empire side. Ready for this? Yes. If we're getting Tamarkan, then it has to be Elsif, which by the way, I made yet another mistake in the previous one. Elsif von Draken is not the Elector Count of Wissenland. It's Emmanuel. Yeah, and I found that after I was reading my Go Trick and Felix book, where it actually says that. I was like, wait a second, it shouldn't be Elsif? I'm confused now. Now, the thing about her is that she is a Lore of Death caster riding a Carmine Dragon, a dragon that is like uh, touched by the Lore of Death itself, mm -hmm. which will be awesome to have that as a legendary Lord option. So, Gelt, uh, watch out. You're not going to be the only spellcaster now. And, Emric, watch out. Before you go straight to Meow Ying, there's another girl choice for you. <laughs> well, she is not a dragon, but she has one. So, maybe he's just going to, like, push her off and just take the mount itself. So be like, see ya. Yes. <laughs> Grand Theft Dragon. <laughs> All right, so now with the Empire, as uh, other people have stated, I think this should be the time to bring Wizard Lords into the Empire roster, kind of like how they brought the Archmages for the High Elves. And hopefully this time actually bring the Gold Wizard, because Balthazar's Guild is the only lore of metal caster in the entire Empire roster, and we deserve like other hero and lord options that have that too. He needs a buddy. Yep. And then with Known, if this is more like a uh, gunpowder and artillery based thing, then we have to bring in the other hero, the Empire Engineer. On his mechanical horse. Yep. And this could be like the Engineer from the Dwarves where he buffs up your range unit and or artillery but can move around and shoot stuff too. Now, going for units in the Empire, one potential one is the Known Ironsides, which are heavily armored, like, uh, Empire rifles. Then another one we have is the Hawkwind Long Rifles, aka the Gisales of the Empire. Now, another one that was actually in Tamarkan, which I didn't know about, I never read it, I just, uh, read some lures about, is that the Marienburg Landship was also a thing as well in that book. Now, here's the thing about it, is that, uh, Marienburg were actually trying to fund their own artillery to stay independent, and Known was helping them out with that, so Marienburg has a ton of money, so they gave Nolan saying, please help us build some artillery piece just for us. And that's where the Marienburg Landship came to be, having like maybe a dozen by the time Tamarkan came in, and that's when they used them. So I can see the Landship being like a lesser version of the Steam Tank. Maybe not being as heavily armored, but having just as much firepower, having more, perhaps. Another potential unit that could come in with it, if we're talking like magic and guns, is the Celestial Hurricanum. And this one is kind of like that Cathayan unit that with the bounce spells and increasing uh, winds of magic, so that could help. Another thing that could come with this one, although I'm not entirely sure, is like, what if we finally get some sort of Foot Knights variant? Wait, like a new type of melee infantry for the Empire? Yeah, because so we actually have like a nice front line to take on range units and not just rely on great swords and halberdiers. All right, moving on to the dwarf side of this DLC here. Now with this one, it was a bit harder because we have like three potential legendary lord options along with the uh, legendary hero alongside it. Because if you go up back to the roadmap, it says uh, something about like a guy who's ready to use his toolbox. Hmm, so it could be a dwarf engineer. Yeah, yeah, look at the potential lords here that I have, because two of them could be the legendary hero here, if not the other, like, legendary lord here. So, with the legendary heroes, we got uh, three potentials here. We got Joseph Bugman, we got Grim Burlickson, we got Malachi Mackaisen. If you ask me, mm -hmm. I think I would go with Malachi Mackaisen, because we well, you know what's better than a dwarf engineer? A slayer engineer. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that with these guys here, these are pretty good options that could add some variety to the uh, dwarf roster especially with Joseph Buckman being actually a ranger legendary lord, or Grim Burkson and Malachi being the engineer legendary lords, or legendary heroes too, depending on how it goes. Because the way I see is that if we get Grim Burkson for the legendary lord for this one, then Malachi will definitely be the legendary hero alongside him. I mean, the dwarves really need help right now. Their betrayed kin is just bullying them in the back alley. Yep. Oh man, can you imagine like an army with Gotrek, Felix, Ulrika, and Malachi all in one? Oh, the big four. Yeah, kind of like Marcus Wolfhard with his legendary heroes too. So now for Dwarves, we do have some options to help them out. So a potential hero could be, it's either called the Dragon or the Demon Slayer, depending on how, which one they go. Just being a Slayer hero, simple. 
Also giving Ungrim some buddies similar to him as well. Now, here's the thing with the units here. Some of them are actually Slayer themed that are missing, like the Goblin Hewer here, which is actually manned by Slayer Engineers. So the whole point is that it sort of chucks axes over people. So I can imagine this doing a lot of damage, very high damage to infantry, having very short range, but it's arcing there. So you can actually toss stuff over your front line too. All right, next unit we have is potentially, if we're going with a Slayer theme, the Doom Seekers here. These are Slayers that actually have axes on chains here, whirling around in a giant whirlwind of madness. So while regular Slayers are anti-large, these guys could be maybe armor peering and anti-infantry specifically. You know what I call them? What? God of War fans. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mini Kratos. Okay, so the other units we have, especially one that is highly demanded, and I really hope Steve puts it in, the Thunder Barge, yep. aka the Dwarf's version of a Sky Junk, but much better. Yeah, and give Malika Makaisen a mount option that he's on the Thunder Barge. Or have the Spirit of Grungi, I believe that's his personal ship, have that be a Regiment of Renown unit, whichever way. Now, another unit I really hope for when it comes to Dwarves is either Rune Golem and or Guardians. Now, this could depend on size, but imagine like giant constructs for the Dwarves powered by Runic Magic, and it's either like a monstrous infantry or a giant sized or both another unit i forgot to put on here that's my bad is that if we are going with a slayer theme also add like uh i forget what they're called but they're kind of like slayer pirates where they have like an axe and a pistol those units are from the dogs of war if they add that that's gonna be a hit that the dogs of war are coming to warhammer 3 soon yeah maybe they'll be the first race pack instead of ender koresh all right now we get to the definitely more speculative side right here where we have the sonesh dlc because if you look on the roadmap here even though it's all in question marks and in mystery, you can tell from the color in the background that that's going to be a Sonesh themed DLC there. All right, so that's why I think for Sonesh here, it could be Sonesh versus High Elves and Dark Elves, being like a big speculation. So for Sonesh here, potential legendary lords, there are three options, although I think one is bigger than the other. The Chala, the denied one, being like the one I personally want, Steerkar, and the Mask of Sonesh as well. Potential lord and hero options, simple like this. Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Sonesh and Exalted Hero of Sonesh. Boom. Now, moving on to units, one that I hope we will continue is Slangor, since we also have Pestigors and Zangors being potential for the other two. Another one that's potential, although I'm still not sure, is perhaps Slanbull, since we still have Minotaurs for corn. All right, now we get to the juicy bits of this DLC, with the mounts being those uh, giant serpents of Sinesh, or as people like to call it, the boob snakes. What did he say? So we have two options being the Pleasure Seekers, aka Demonettes riding those serpents, or Knights of whatever, because there was no official name of it, but like Knights of Desire or something being almost like this monstrous cavalry unit with the serpent, kind of like what they call from the Tomb Kings, you know, uh, the Negro Serpents. And also, you know Morathi is so close to Sonesh, right? Yeah, if this is involving Dark Elves, maybe they could touch her up to add more Sonesh units into a roster, not just Demonettes. Alright, another potential unit for Sonesh is the Greater Spawn of Sonesh, because in regards to single anti-units, I don't think they have that many. Um, excuse me, why does the greater spawn slash look 100% sus? Uh, well, don't blame me. These are the artist's work. That's Games Workshop, not me. What the hell is even that? Now, moving on, if we are going with elves, here's high elves. And this is like part of the speculation we did before, where this could be the sea-based high elf DLC with Sea Lord Isling, you know, leading it, but potential hero being the Lothurn Sea Helm alongside him. And instead of like the high elf noble being like a beat stick, this guy could be your support lord buffing up your infantry and range units. Now, two units I do want to see with this DLC, if it is Sea Lord Isling, is the Lothurn Skycutter and the Mer Worm. Which, by the way, CA, how come you didn't put the Murworm in when the Vampire Coast came into play? You guys already made the models, too. But anyway, please add that in and maybe give the Vampire Coast an update to add the Undead version, too. And the Dark Elves with their Enslaved version. Yeah, that could be potential as well. Alright, moving on to the Dark Elves, there is one potential Legendary Lord I have thought of in that Great Book of Grudges and Loremaster Sosek thought, too. Talaris Dreadbringer, the Avatar, or like the representative Kane in the Mortal Realm. This could be just a pure melee guy that is super tanky and super melee maybe no mounts and no uh, spellcasting. And now here's the part with the Dark Elves that makes it really hard for a DLC because they have already have so much from their roster that it's almost like you have to pull stuff out of other lower almost 40k in order to bring stuff in for them. So one Lord option I did think about since it's almost sea based is perhaps a getting official Black Ark Fleet Master with unique models. And maybe instead of having a regular uh, Dark Elf Lord for the Black Arcs, have it these guys instead to be proper themed. And when it comes to units, like I said, pretty much they already have everything. You could add the Enslaved Murrworm if you want to do that. But one thing I was thinking about is perhaps a statue or an avatar of Kane 
So maybe this could be like the example of like, oh, there were so many sacrifices that an actual statue of Cain came to life. Kind of like the rogue idol of Gork. Yeah, so like again, I apologize the Dark Elves being so lackluster, but it's because they already have so much. It's only really named characters that are missing and that's it. All right, now there's one other DLC. They haven't revealed it, but I figured since we have one on Zinch, one on Nurgle, one on Sonesh, why not one on Korn for next year as well, summer 2024? Yeah, what about the Blood God? What about the Skull Dude? Yeah, exactly. I don't know why they haven't revealed it, but I think it's going to be that pattern right there, like each DLC being represented for the each mono god faction. All right, so for this one here, we have no idea. But as you saw, there was actually a bit of a pattern. So first you have Zinch versus Cafe and Kislev, aka a Chaos God versus two Warhammer 3 races, right? Then you have Thrones of Decay, a Chaos God faction versus two Warhammer 1 races. Then you have the Slanesh DLC, which hopefully is High Elves and Dark Elves, not only for theming of Slanesh versus Elves, but also another Chaos God versus two Warhammer 2 races. So I was thinking, what could Korn do? But then I thought, well, it seemed like all of these guys are facing some sort of orderly faction, except for Sinesh with the Dark Elves. What if this Korn DLC is just nothing but just badass bloodlust and just warmongering all the way through? What if it's Korn versus Ogres and Norska, two pre-order races? Yes! Exactly. And again, like, there's no reason for them not to fight each other since they're all so crazy and wanting to beat stuff up. All right, so for Korn, there's uh, two potential legendary lords that I heard about. Uzul the Skull Ticker or Orbal the Undefeated. Now, Uzul Skull Ticker is imagine like he is the ultimate duelist for Korn, kind of like Wolfric the Wanderer, where his stick is literally teleporting around the world and facing challengers that he deems worthy. And he has never lost a duel except for one time which annoys him to death. You know who he lost against? Sigmar Heldenhammer. Hey, yes, sir. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! I mean, literally everyone loses against Sigmar because he's that badass. Nagash lost against him. Azazel lost against him. Uzul Skull Ticker lost against him. Uh, the entire Greenskin army lost against him. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! And then you also have Arbald the Undefeated, a great champion of corn, riding a gigantic flesh hound of corn. Yeah, I didn't add the legendary heroes here because it's so far in the future, and we don't know if we're getting a corn legendary hero with the Skulls event here. Are you sure about that? But the thing that was interesting about him is that he is so favored by corn that corn is always watching him like a helicopter parent almost. And if Arbo ever runs away or flees in cowardice, then corn will smite him so hard that he'll just turn into a chaos spawn. I don't know if they'll actually implement that into the game because that would be kind of weird. I would be really careful careful with that because having massive devos like that, eh, the community is not the biggest fan of that, especially if it's not fair or if it's way too much. All right, so going into potential units, Korn has plenty of options, especially when it comes to those aspiring champions I talked about with the Wrathmongers and the Skull Reapers. Yeah, so these Wrathmongers are like the doom seekers of the Chaos Warriors of Korn here with giant uh, flails and being like, now these are the real Kratos here. And then we have the Skull Reapers being another aspiring champion with giant great weapons here. Another unit is that since we're going with the whole gore theme, Korn Gores could be another one to add in there. And then going into the actual like big beasties, we have two options here, the Slaughter Brute or the Blood Beast. Both kind of being the same thing, maybe with some unique abilities here and there. So those are my guesses when it comes to Korn because they already have a ton of good stuff, but there are some unique models and unique creatures they are technically missing, but not really needed as much right now. So for the Norska thing, this is where I kind of ran out of time, but uh, pull some of the stuff from this previous speculation here, where if Norska is coming in, then please, please, please give them a different Lord option because it sucks having only one for Norska. So perhaps you could give them Shaman Lords or my personal favorite, the Femir Nobles. And then one potential unit you could have for a big bad is the Cursed Etin, which we talked about previously. Being like this giant two-headed creature with uh, bounce spells attached to him too. And of course you could have put some other Norskin units in there like perhaps some Femir varieties or one we talked about the Norskin Wailers as well being like even better Javelin throwers. I don't know, this might sound crazy, but you remember the uh, Chaos Dwarf Colossus? You, you know what it reminds me of? The Triceratops Titan from Power World. Remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know the log cannon mammoth? Oh yeah, I remember that from Paraworld. Wow, you're thinking about having some ballista on a mammoth? For Norska. Maybe, but Norska is not really known for like being actually engineers like that. Traditional artillery, not like those advances like the Empire has. Again, not sure. I get what you're going at, but if we are talking about elephants or mammoths mounted with artillery, I think that's more end with their war elephants. Oh, uh, okay. So again, sorry I didn't put that much into the Norska thing because it was a bit harder than I thought it was going to be, especially when it comes to potential lords. There's only one option option there. And I have no idea who could face off against the ogres and corn at the same time like that. Unless we're talking about Lord Mortkin being another like beat stick of a guy. All right, now going on to the ogres. And here's why I think if they go down this route of corn versus Norska versus ogres or Northern tribes as they could be rebranded, it could be all about the challenge stone here. The challenge stone? Yeah. So it's a little landmark in ogre kingdom territory where there's always
always going to be a big fight between ogres and chaos people because they want to take over that stone. So it's like the battle of Zanbaijin, but it's a battle for one big stone, right? Yeah. But I thought they figured that could be a good way to tell a story for this DLC in the narrative portion. Again, this is all speculation. This None of this is factual. And I'm just trying to guess out of something that could come out a year or a little over from now. So please. So potential legendary lords for the ogres here. There are two available, and I'm surprised we didn't get them with the chaos dwarves, but there's Gark Iron Skin or Gold Fag Man Eater. Personally, if we don't get Gark Iron Skin anytime soon, I really think it's going to be him because it makes a bit more sense with Chownstone. Because if I remember, I think he starts a little closer to it. All right, so for ogres, one hero option that we're currently missing from the book is the Bruiser, just being a mini tyrant. All right, now when it comes to units here, there are several, and I didn't include all of them here because I ran out of time. So we got Yetis over here that we're still missing and the Great Thunder Tusk. There are plenty of other units too, like perhaps if we are going with Gold Fag instead of Gark, they should definitely add more man eater varieties like the ninja ones for example or maybe some other ones with different abilities and perhaps even some new noblar units too yeah like the noblar on another noblar yeah or noblars with giant flays on them called man biters if i remember correctly or the lucky guys all right so that's my entire speculation there like sorry if it seemed a bit bare bones in the later part it was just that i was running out of time and it's such speculation that i wasn't sure in regards to that yeah but i'd say your speculation is of course once again amazing i mean i get to know a little bit more of the characters and i got to know some of the new characters and some of the units that i don't know yet like with kislev and their own bat uh i'm guessing you're gonna be angry if steve doesn't add a giant bat to kislev huh i'm okay it's just if they add this thing it's gonna be confusing for the vampires too they're like we have giant bats and now they have giant bats what the heck <laughs> yeah and by the way the vampires should get dlc but maybe like their own champions of chaos much later down the line yeah with the four bloodlines so uh space scientist thank you very much for joining me in this speculation and uh we'll see if any of this comes into truth here thanks for watching our video if you guys want to see some more content in both of our channels consider subscribing to both of us and liking the video and comment down below what do you want us to do next thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time bye see you later